What many of us didn't know at that time was obviously your your story, and it's something that oh, over the years we've met you many times, and you've both been incredibly brave because you've been very open about the difficulties that you both face when when Jermaine was growing up, and also at, at the hands of your partner Mandy. Yes. For for those out there who maybe haven't heard your story, tell us it. Um, basically 18 years of tortures that just got worse over time um, and having children as well going through the, the process of bringing them up and trying to give them a normal childhood was mm -hmm. really difficult. Because you obviously as a mother you're trying to protect your children from the abuse that you yourself were, were getting. Yes. It then transferred onto the children, didn't it? Um, mentally, it transferred, and um, it can't not because they see, they hear things. Yeah. Um, and we push for that as well, don't we, Jermaine, to get uh, help for the youth? Yeah. Because it, they're unheard, and it's the women go into the refugees and they speak, and nobody speaks to the children to ask them how they feel. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's vital that the children get help and you know, bringing them up through the generations. They need to have a positive hmm. outlook on life and to be steered in the right direction and to, to, to be explained what's right and what's wrong, basically, because some children that go through the domestic violence uh, with, with the parents, they don't actually know what's right and wrong, yeah, but I yeah. was always explaining to my children when my ex left what was right and what was wrong, yeah. um, and this isn't acceptable, but we weren't able to get out of the situation. I tried running away quite a few times yeah. and um, he was a computer hacker so he used to track us down. So wherever we went, I changed my name, I cut my hair off, we did everything we could yeah. to be underground but he tracked us down. So when people say, why didn't you get away from him? Mm. Yeah, that's tried. What, I mean, that's sort of what people think, don't yeah, they, when they that you just stay, but it's not like, like that, but, you fight. But what, what was it in the end? I mean, it was basically that he went to prison, wasn't it? That sort of provided the, the break, I think, that the, yeah. made you able to get away from him. Yeah, like I said, the tortures got worse over the years and the final one was a four-day long torture um, with knives and a blowtorch. And my children thought I was dead, so Carice had gone to school and said to her teacher, I think my dad's killed my mum. And they phoned the police and then the police come and got a ladder got me out of the bedroom and it went from there. But it was still a process of fighting because he was saying not guilty. <laughs> mm. We went through a whole mm. year of trials, didn't we? And the children had to do video link interviews, which I found harrowing for them to have to do because he was pleading not guilty. Mm. And it was a whole year of that. Mm. Do you mind just watching you, just sitting there listening to that again and you're, and you're wringing your hands? <laughs> it was just... How do you continue on? You have a very close relationship. You must be enormously proud of your mum being so Definitely. brave. <laughs> but what about what about you and your relationship with her? I think for me at home, there was a clear divide between just light and dark. So if I didn't have my mum, I could have easily fallen into addiction, <coughs> drinking, you know, just been a rebel. But my mum was always... She never cussed my father. and <laughs> She always just was a good example of what love should be. Yeah. So I guess I'm just lucky to have been brainwashed by the right person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, Jermaine, that, you know, that, that you, you take that attitude because in so many cases you hear of, of the behaviour being repeated through, mm. through the generations and down through the, through the family. And you're right, you were brainwashed by the, the, the right person. You, you took your inspiration and, and kept strong through the incredible bond that the two of you have. Obviously, we're coming up to Mother's Day on Sunday, so we have to ask you, you know, <laughs> what is it that you think that is so incredible about Jermaine? What do you think is so incredible about your mum? Where to begin? Yeah. <laughs> There's so many times I've just seen my mother just physically... I can't believe that she's still here. Like, the doctor jokes and say, you're a cat with nine lives. <laughs> but there's so many times I've just seen through... There's so many, like, eptopic pregnancy. There's so many things aside from abuse that my mum's just dealt with. Yeah. I just can't believe. Even before my father, your stepfather and things like that, I'm just... <laughs> what been, can I say? You've been, both been incredibly strong. And yeah. I, I just want to mention your brother, Daniel. You had an older brother who committed suicide um, because of the fact that your partner all those years ago was coming out of prison. 
He, what, what is it, Jermaine, what's the difference between you and your brother that you have survived this, that you have found something that is helping you to get through it that Daniel clearly didn't find? I think, personally, the difference is that um, he was first, um, to be honest. <laughs> First, yeah. as in first the oldest, and yeah. he saw um, just more, lived through more. Take his life, because <coughs> I saw the effect on my family. I think the, the demon my family struggle with is suicide. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things afterwards, being abused and put into a box, is self worth, and just trying to find a purpose for your living. Yeah. So, how, how do you? Uh, would, would you say that music has been a way of dealing with such a harrowing? Background. Think, well, you know, don't you? Well, of course I do. I mean, <laughs> I, I would, you know, I would say it was that mm. for me, but it's not that for every person. But mm. uh, on, honestly, I'm, I'm so emotional just listening to the two of you, and the strength that you are displaying right now is just mm. so admirable. It really, really is, and I just think, I just think it's fantastic, and I really do appreciate you telling your story and being so open about it as well. Mm. It's very, very important. <laughs> If, if you're aware of, of what you're doing, is you're, is you're obviously you're gaining control because all those years Absolutely. of being out of control and being at mm. the, the, the mercy of somebody else, by being so open about it, abuse happens because people keep it behind yeah. closed yeah. doors. Mm -hmm. And by exposing the monster for what it really is, gives you the strength to deal with it. And we're, all of us here, it's incredible. we've got a lot of admiration for Absolutely. both of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you've enjoyed that, then why not click here for more? And don't forget to subscribe by clicking here so that you never miss out on the best Loose Women moments. Well, all I know is that when I got pregnant with Lauren, so she'll be 33 in April, so probably 33, 34 years ago, there wasn't all the information that we've mm. got now. So I did smoke when I had Lauren. I didn't know, and obviously I look back at it now and I'm mm. disgusted that I did, but at the time, you didn't know of the dangers.